Hello, welcome to Telecom TV. My name is Tony Chan. And with me today is Wang Zhengqiu, who is Head of Open Source and Research at Huawei Technologies. He also serves as a board member at OPNFB. Uh, Mr. Zhu, um, how would you describe Huawei's contribution to uh, OPNFB right now? Yeah, OPNV is a very, very important open source uh, community for Huawei and for telecom industry. It's really the first organization that is, you know, in open source community dedicated to promote and uh, move NRV for service providers worldwide. So Huawei has always, you know, we are the uh, founding uh, platinum member of the organization. Uh, uh, I'm the, the secretary of the board. We committed really a lot of resources into it. We see the, uh, the, the, the organization very important for our industry. How would you describe the value of OPN and NFB to operators? So uh, Opium V as a uh, we we you know in the open source uh, jargon I guess called a midstream uh, uh, open source project. Right. What it means is that it's going to take a lot of the open source components that have been developed in very you know, many different contexts. Many of them Huawei spent a lot of our uh, engineer resources to do and to put them together for specifically for service providers. And service providers uh, you know, figured out, hey, this is a great thing, a lot of open source components are happening, a lot of people have been very successful in other industries for open source. And uh, what can they do? Why right? can leverage this uh, uh, technology trend? And what they realize is that it's very difficult to put things together and to make it into a reliable platform, a reliable service. And so this is where I think uh, OPNV was born. Uh, in the, in the initially, the telecom industry goes to the traditional standardization route. Uh, but very quickly they realize, you know, number one, that's too slow. Mm -hmm. And number two, hey, you know, this is a very vibrant uh, community out there uh, who've done great things in cloud computing, and why can't we do the same? And so that's where the uh, OPM is born. And I think it's really important that uh, service providers all recognize that uh, this is the place where they can sort of uh, uh, bridge the two worlds, right? You know, a lot of people who are traditional in telecom and also the open source community. So this is a place that happened. Uh, I think it's very, very critical. Uh, there's a lot of talk in the industry about cloud native. Uh, where does Huawei see open source fitting into the transformation to this cloud native uh, telco environment? Uh, Huawei has uh, a lot of contributions in the uh, OPMV project. We are you know, number one, number two in terms of uh, contributions. And what you see is that the key thing to get into our, you know, what the, the uh, operators need is I will categorize as a three properties we need to have. Uh, number one is in, uh, uh, we call it elasticity. Uh, so the resources are pulled together, physical resources in one place into a pool that can be shared. Uh, so you don't have to move things around uh, physically tied to something, right? Yeah. Um, and that the software are distributed so that it can grow out and shrink as needed. Uh, we even look at, you know, energy use, for example. You can increase, reduce the load as it goes. And so that's, that's one thing to have. The second thing we really uh, think the system for the future need to have is in, uh, in resiliency and robustness. And, and that related to you know, how we go actually develop these software. Uh, can the software run um, uh, we call um, uh, uh, off the shelf kind of mm -hmm. hardware equipment and can you build a software provider you know five nines reliability out of that uh, so that requires us to think about how do we architect uh, software uh, in a different way very different mm -hmm. way right? I, be, be, be distributed and uh, using microservices and the third one I want to mention uh, uh, you know, other than being uh, elastic and being resilient, it's really um, the question of how we can um, uh, make the, the, the operator's service agile. So agility is another thing. And this is going to be really fundamentally important to the operators, because that's where uh, the business world comes in. That's where our real end customers' needs are being met, right? And so, to get all these things, 
uh, virtualization alone uh, is, uh, is uh, not sufficient. So a lot of things what we happen is that you start with NLV, you virtualize network functions. And uh, um, so you know, it's like a transformation. You have a new platform. You can move a lot of things on this platform as a virtualized entity. Uh, but the second thing you want to do is now you have this great platform. Maybe you should you know, design your future services in fundamentally different way. And that's what a cloud native is. So you, you know, think about it as, a, as a, 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 you move to a new home. Uh, initially, you move all your furniture, everything to the new house, right? And, you know, uh, but very soon you will realize you, know, you want to have new children and they're going to have brain in their needs. And it's very, very different. So I, I like the cloud native world. Uh, it's a good, great phrase. We're basically going to design the future of services uh, in very different ways. So I think it's a continuation. And OpenV, just uh, I think we listened to a lot of uh, talks this week, right? OpenV is embarked on that as well. So we'll be looking at containerization of services. We'll be looking at like Kubernetes to do cloud native orchestration. And I think this is a great uh, area. And Huawei's products are exactly on this trend. So we look at an uh, all cloud uh, strategy that will go into it and uh, really have a migration you know, from hardware to virtualization and to cloud native. If, if you could simplify the, the journey uh, or the transformation between uh, operators' environments today and a cloud native environment, what are the, the key milestone steps that you can name in, in that journey? I mean, is, is, do you have a, a strategy where you can map out how an infrastructure can evolve to this cloud native? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, certainly. So we look at uh, from uh, uh, you know, a business needs point of view, right? You start with essentially, we depend on the uh, operators uh, where they are. Uh, in their business transformation and uh, where they want to be. Um, so for, uh, for uh, operators who want to get uh, you know, initial phase of virtualization, a lot of times this happens because there's an end of life to some service. So now have an opportunity to bring NLV, right? Um, uh, they may be looking at a brand new, you know, new service like uh, MB uh, I IoT. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a great new service and it's going to have a lot of new need. Um, they can also be looking at a uh, simply transformation from a, you know, old equipment to newer ones. So a lot of opportunity happen, and depending on which phase they are in, uh, the needs are slightly different. So we'll be meeting those requirements uh, depending on their needs. And the more lax equipment, you know, we, we traditionally, I think people would do is because they already established a certain kind of a business process and procedures. So we'll be migrating to a, you know, a virtualization NMV solution. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them, over 200 of them already deployed uh, uh, so far uh, uh, by Huawei. So these systems are basically, you know, it's, it's mature. They are, they, are, uh, they are in the tip, I think, uh, going up. A lot of, lot of, lot of uh, organizations are doing that now. Um, when you look at the newer services, right, so services which may have uh, a lot different uh, scale requirements, and uh, uh, into the future, I think uh, the cloud native solutions will make a lot of sense. Do you have a timeline for uh, cloud native? When you look at the market today, do you think uh, maybe we're 10% deployed or 20% deployed? And <laughs> when do you think you'll get to like 80%, for example? Yeah, you'll probably hear a lot of uh, words like uh, Volte. Uh, you like look at uh, uh, you know uh, cloud EPC, cloud IMS, cloud uh, uh, VPNs. Uh, a lot of these are happening today, and I think uh, uh, we mentioned in the keynote a lot of uh, uh, projections of where this is going to be, and there's a uh, I think uh, very rapid growth that's going to be happening in uh, in commercial deployments in the next two years. Uh, um, many of these service providers are publicly committed to, to you know, you know I, I think uh, uh, AT&T, for example, publicly mentioned the 75%. And there's a lot of uh, these kind of uh, uh, targets I think a lot of service providers are doing. I think we are uh, on track on that. Um, for future, I think uh, there's a, you know, different ways looking at uh, personal business uh, enterprise communications, we can look at the videos for our video services are fundamentally changing uh, the way we communicate. 
Um, we have IoT, and uh, uh, we, you know, I've been referring to applications people have been thinking about for 5G. Right, this application can be, you know, driverless cars, can be uh, surgeons doing remote procedures. Uh, can be uh, looking at uh, uh, many billions of devices that are feeding us all with intelligence uh, that we can you know, apply AI to it, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, so those ones, I think, uh, where uh, we're looking at uh, based on, it will be based on a cloud-native foundation. Thank you very much, Mr. G. You're very welcome. Thank you.